Uh, welcome to the first of this C++ Builder XE3 recordings. I'm David I, and over the next 31 days of January, I'm going to show you all of the capabilities that you can use for C++ development with C++ Builder XE3. In this first video, we're going to take a look at the different types of projects that you can create. And you can see all these projects by saying File, New, and up at the top you'll see that I've got Rad Studio installed, I've got Delphi and C++ Builder projects. These are some of the common ones. If we want to see all of the projects, we'll choose Other. And then in the C++ Builder project area, we can see console applications, control panel apps, FireMonkey desktop apps, FireMonkey Metropolis, uh, DLLs, service applications, uh, VCL application, VCL uh, Metropolis, ActiveX, uh, C files, C++ source files, data modules, uh, VCL forms and frames, uh, data snap servers, web broker, uh, SOAP server, uh, and the web snap technology. What we're going to do is just build a starting FireMonkey desktop application. So we'll click on the icon and click OK. The FireMonkey application can be either an HD or high definition 2D FireMonkey application, or we can create a 3D FireMonkey application. Let's just keep it simple and create a, an HD FireMonkey application. Now we've got a starting C++ project that's being created by the wizard. And it, in here we've got the, the source file, a pre-compiled header file that's created, and we've got a form where we can uh, drag and drop components. We can flip over to source code, and we can look at the header file if, if needed. Let's just do something real simple with the project. We're going to add a few components. So I'll hit F6, which brings up ID Insight. And let's add a button. And we'll add an edit box. And we'll also add a list box. This is the beginning application that we usually create as a start of doing C++ development uh, in C++ Builder. We'll set the text property of the button to Add. We're going to use this to take the contents of the edit box and add it to the list box. So we'll double click on the add button and it'll bring up the event handler for the on button click. And here we can just say list box 1 and we can wait for the ID insight and the parameter and code completion to come up in C++ Builder. And we can say let's take and add to the to the items and we'll say we'll call the add method and it's going to take it's going to take a unicode string and we'll take we'll get from the edit box the string that we type in we'll take its text property and just in that code we say take the edit text add it to the list items so let's just run this application now in, in windows 32 bit using the 32 bit c++ compiler It'll compile and link the application. And now we've got our first simple application. So whatever we put in the edit box, click the Add button. Say hello, world, for example, uh, the answer to everything in the universe, 42. We've got our first application with a single line of C++ code. And of course, everything that's underneath that's supported by the FireMonkey framework for building applications on Windows and Macintosh, and in the future on mobile platforms and other operating systems. So let's save all of this over out to our uh, work area. There's our project file called Project 2. Now if you look over in the project window, uh, we've got some information about the project. We've got build configurations. We can build a debug version or a release version. We've got target platforms that by default we have a 32-bit Windows target platform. And then we've got a source file with the form file that has the extension .fmx and a header file that's associated with any components that we put in the source file. So here is our class for the form. It inherits from tform. And we've got our button, our edit box, our list box, and that button click event handler. So that'll orient you to how we quickly build up the form class and build up the application. We can switch back and forth again to the form file. Now if we want to build this same application and run it on 64-bit windows. We simply go to the project window. We right mouse click and say add platform and we can choose 64-bit windows. And now when we run this application, we'll compile it again. Now we'll compile and link this application using the new 64-bit windows C++ compiler. And we'll have the same application 
running this time as a 64-bit application. And it works just the same way as, as it did in 32-bit Windows. Just put in something in the edit box. And that's how easy it is to get started in C++ Builder building 32-bit and 64-bit Windows applications. Now, if, we got a Mac, if you have a Macintosh, you can also choose target platform and say, I want to build an OS X application. Now, in order to build for a Macintosh, we need to uh, add what's called a remote profile to our application. So we can choose the tar OS X target platform, right mouse click, and assign a remote profile to it. We'll say add, and we'll call this my Mac. And the host name of my computer is Samwise Gamgee. And if that's the name of it, we can go and test the connection. It also goes through a port number, so you can open up whatever port you want from your Windows machine to your Macintosh. And we can test the connection, and if, if it connects properly, uh, then we get this succeeded message. And the way that works is over on the Macintosh side, we have our platform assistance server started. And the platform assistance server is listening for commands from the IDE running on Windows. The ID will then compile the application for Macintosh, send the application over that port through TCP IP to the platform assistant server, which will do the work to save it and launch it on the Macintosh side. So let's go back down and, and say OK. We can set up any other uh, options that we want. Also, the compiler will need to know where your include files are for the operating system so that we can use those the information uh, in those include files as part of the build process. So we say use this profile with C++ project, yes. Click finish and now we can build the application for a Macintosh. There's two different options in the OS X target platform tree. One is normal which is building to run on your app on your Macintosh directly. You can also build for the Macintosh application store. We're just going to build uh, a normal application, either a debug or a release version. And once we've set up uh, the connection to the Macintosh, we can simply go and click Run to compile and run the application for OS X. It will compile in the ID, link in the ID, and then when it's completed, it will deploy the application that's built and any runtime libraries that are required and other files required. And then we can switch over to the Macintosh and see the application running. Now over here on the Macintosh, we've started the Platform Assistant Server. The Platform Assistant Server uh, listens on TCP IP on a sport port that you specify. The IDE over on Windows will talk to the Platform Assistant Server on the Macintosh, and it will use that to send applications over from the Windows ID to the Macintosh so you can execute your applications. It also performs other operations like sending and deploying additional files that are required for your application. And it also supports debugging so you can use the Windows ID to debug your Macintosh applications. And now over here on Macintosh we've got our our application, the same application that was built with FireMonkey, in this case compiled for OS X. And we can put in uh, the same uh, inputs into the edit box and add the text to the list box. So hello world uh, 42 and whatever else you want. And then you've got a menu at the top where you can simply quit the application and go back to the IDE. So there is building your first C++ Builder XE3 32-bit and 64-bit Windows application and Macintosh OS X application all from the IDE using components and FireMonkey to do cross-platform development.